This video begins with a completely stripped P226 frame. The fixed front ejector pin should still be on the frame and should not be removed. This is the magazine catch. This is the magazine catch stop, the catch stop spring, and the support plate. I begin by assembling the magazine catch. Note where the magazine catch stop will go. Start by taking the magazine catch stop and inserting the catch stop spring. Insert both of these into the side hole of the magazine catch. Note the orientation of the magazine catch stop and insert the magazine catch into the frame. Being very careful, I use a small flat blade screwdriver to depress the magazine catch stop and then push the magazine catch into position. The magazine catch stop will now prevent the magazine catch from being removed. After turning the frame over, you can insert the magazine catch spring and slide into position the support plate. This is placed on top of the frame, pushed gently across. Use a small flat blade screwdriver or some other tool to carefully depress the spring which should be lubricated and push the support plate completely into position. Turn the frame over and push the magazine catch to verify it goes in and returns on its own. It is now installed correctly. This is the hammer stop, the hammer reset spring, and the hammer stop pin. Insert the hammer reset spring into the hammer stop. Note the correct orientation of how the hammer reset spring should be inserted into the hammer stop. Correctly orientate the hammer stop and hammer reset spring and slide it into the frame and align the holes as shown here. This is the hammer stop pin. The hammer stop pin goes into this hole and passes through the hammer stop. Make sure that the hammer stop is correctly orientated inside the frame and push the pin through, locking it in position. Since this gun is well used and I don't have any Duracoat, I can use a flat bladed screwdriver to push the pin in. However, you may need to use a hammer or some other tool to pass it through. If we take a look through the top of the frame, we can see the hammer reset spring. A pin inside the hammer itself is going to be located underneath that pin when we insert the hammer. This is the large hammer pin, and this is the hammer. This is where they will be located inside the frame. The trigger will be inserted through the top of the frame. Note the small trigger pin. The screwdriver shows how the hammer reset spring will be located when the hammer is installed. T226 
tilt the hammer back when installing into the frame and then pull it back a little bit so that it catches underneath the hammer reset spring. Making sure the hammer is correctly aligned inside the frame, install the large hammer pin. This is the decocking lever bearing. This is the decocking lever. And this is the decocking lever spring. This is the hole that the decocking lever bearing will pass through from the inside of the frame. Because I have small enough fingers, I can actually use them to pass the decocking lever bearing inside the frame but you may need to use a small pair of needle nose pliers or you can turn the frame over to the other side and pass it through the larger opening. After installing the decocking lever bearing, install the decocking lever as shown here. Now go ahead and install the decocking lever spring by first placing it in the top of the decocking lever bearing and use either a pair of needle nose pliers or a small screwdriver to carefully place the end of the decocking lever spring into the small hole in the decocking lever itself. As mentioned before, you can turn the frame around to get better access to installing the decocking lever bearing if that makes it easier for you. For installing the next group of parts, I like to use a Q-tip, so I cut off one end like this. It can get a little cramped and hard to see how these next few components go together when being installed inside the frame. So I'm going to show you an example here outside of the frame so that you can see what the correct orientation of these parts will be as they pass through the sear pivot pin. Let's take a look at how the next few components will be orientated and installed inside the frame. First there is the ejector pin. It will be located here. This is the sear. Note the orientation, the hook facing backwards. This is the safety lever. Also note the orientation of how this piece will go in. All of them will go through the sear pivot pin. The sear spring goes inside the sear and will eventually be locked into position, but not, af not until after the sear pivot pin has been installed. Let's begin by installing the ejector. Installing the sear can be a little bit cumbersome, so be patient as you do this.
I like to slide it in from underneath and then rotate it forward. Now I use the end of my Q-tip and pass it through the frame into the sear and then hold my thumb down on the Q-tip to lock it into position. Now I can take the sear spring and slide that inside the sear. Now I push it forward until it just comes out the other end of the sear, like so. This is what it would look like if the pin was going all the way through. Now I'm going to back this off so that I can insert the safety. I like to slide the safety in from the front to the back. So noting the orientation here and how it would pass through inside the frame. I now move it into position. Again, I have a little bit of pressure on the Q-tip so that it holds everything else in the correct position to allow me to slide it in easily. Once I have the safety lever in position, I can just pass the Q-tip all the way through and verify that everything is installed correctly. Go ahead and insert the sear pivot pin from the opposite side. As you push on the sear pivot pin, you can retract the Q-tip. In case you're wondering why the sear pivot pin isn't as wide as the frame itself, it's because it has to pass through the frame rail. When the gun is fired and the pin heats up, if it was the same length as the frame rail, it would expand and cause damage to the frame itself. So this is normal. Let's go ahead and complete the installation of the sear spring by pushing it underneath the front ejector fixed pin. For this I use a small flat blade screwdriver, but you may have a better tool for this job. You can see here in the frame where the hammer strut will have to pass through in order to meet the bottom of the hammer. Here I'm turning the hammer strut around so that you can see from the opposite side to see approximately how it's located inside the frame and inside the hammer itself. Go ahead and take the mainspring and seat it onto the hammer strut. You can now take the mainspring seat and firmly push it and lock it into position on the back of the frame. This is the trigger bar, this is the trigger, and this is the trigger pivot pin. They will be located here. Start by taking the trigger bar and installing the trigger 
as shown. To install the trigger bar and the trigger, drop the trigger down through the top of the frame and then pass the trigger bar through the back of the frame as shown here. Then orientate the trigger so that the trigger pivot pin will be able to pass through. Turn the gun over to the other side and install the takedown lever. This is the slide catch lever. This is the trigger pivot pin and it's very important that it's orientated correctly. The side of the pin that has the notch in it needs to be facing the left hand side of the gun as demonstrated. Install the takedown lever and then pass the trigger pivot pin all the way through through the trigger and out the other side of the frame. It is very important to note the two notches on the trigger pivot pin as this is where the locking insert will slide in. This can be rotated around correctly by using a flat blade screwdriver on the left hand side Rotate this around so that these flat points that you can see in the video are actually facing down. We can now install the trigger bar spring. This bottom section will go here and this hooked section will go here. Since my fingers were in the way, here is a close-up of what it will look like when it's installed. I've already installed the slide catch lever spring into the side of the locking insert. It can only go in one way. Now we're going to drop the locking insert into the frame. But first let's make sure we have the levers out of the way so that the locking insert can pass into those small cuts inside the trigger pivot pin. It should drop in very easily and should not require force if the trigger pivot pin has been rotated around correctly. This is the takedown lever. Note this flat spot here. That is going to face the bottom of the slide catch lever spring. So orientate it so that they meet. Push it in through the hole and you can then rotate which will push the slide catch lever spring out of the way so that the takedown lever can pass all the way through. Rotate it to the front, push it all the way in and then down. Finally, go and install the grip plate left and the grip plate right. There are two screws for each side. As the grip plate is actually plastic, tighten the screws but not too tight. Last but not least, install the frame onto the body and make sure that everything works as expected. Thank you for watching my video.